If you are watching this video, then you're either A, new to Crow 4, or B, contemplating joining early access. I can't recommend this game enough. If you do join, then welcome to Crow 4. The first thing you want to do as a new player is start your passive training. Doesn't matter which one you press on, but press enter. Come up to the top section here, skills. Once you're in skills, press browse. You can see that there's three professions, combat, crafting, and exploration. There is a lot of information to give when it comes to passive tree. So let's just begin by starting at points. If you like PVP, I suggest you go to combat and you go into exploration. If you're not into PV PVP so much, crafting and exploration. That will do for now. Back at the main menu, start a new character up. I'm gonna be playing an Elkin Knight. I strongly suggest that you go into God's Reach if you're a new player. Press browse search, click on the current campaign, enter world. Whenever selecting a character to join a new server or an old server, you will come back to Beachhead. Beachhead is the same regardless if you're a God's Reach or campaign. If you make your way up here, you will find yourself some chests. They have a fast respawn time of some basic tools. Let's grab these basic tools and go make some other ones. If you press I, it will open up the interface. You can right click on your tools to add them down to your taskbar or click and drag it down to the number that you'd like it on. First, I'm gonna start by getting some wood. Now that you have some wood, you can either A, get into your inventory by pressing the middle mouse button or the shortcut I. Come up the top left hand side of the screen. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna craft a hammer and we're gonna craft a pick. Got a hammer and you wanna place three wood in. Now either click and drag your wood in. Press assemble, make item. Or you can just right click the log and it'll go into your slots. I'm now making a pick. This black and white line stone here is, uh, is slag. It's an ore. You need to use a pick for ore and you need to use a hammer for cobblestone. While we are here, I want to show you how to make bandages as you may need them for spiders just up ahead. By pressing I again, but back up the personal crafting, click on basic survivalist, bandage. You need two pieces of wood per bandage. Make your way south so we can start training on spiders. Once you've made your way to the spiders, make sure you've got your equipment on by clicking I, bringing your sword and your shield or whatever weapon is appropriate to your class on. Pressing the U to go into combat stance or Z on your combat stance. This also, this um, changes based on the class that you're playing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill a few of these spiders. As you can see, they're quite weak. These are rank one. so. The mobs in Crowfall work on ranks, not on levels. The max level that a character can get is 30. The max level, uh, the max rank monster you're gonna see mob uh, in Crowfall is only level 10. So what I've just got, this item here, Spider Fangs, it's a sacrifice item. It's an item that I can use at a pit in order to get XP, and I'll do that shortly. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna skin this spider here you need a knife. Just like harvesting a tree, slag or stones, you just need your appropriate tool.
So just now I got hide. The hide you're gonna need in order to make leather armor. Now it's you're not gonna be able to make amazing leather armor when you have not got training in your passive tree. However, you can use it for stuff like selling to the vendor if you're short on gold or just to practice crafting and see how it's all made. I also got this spider meat, which is also another sacrifice item. So I got 20 XP out of that one and these over here are worth 41 XP. And as you can see, I've only got a grand total of 100 XP out of these two spiders so far. So sack items are actually worth quite a lot. These crystals here are hunger crystals. Hunger crystals have a chance to drop additives that you can you can add to your weapons when you're crafting weapons and increases some stats on that. Um, they also drop sack items. So if you wanna to get to say, for example, level five, uh, you could mine these for maybe five minutes and you'd be done. Once you finish killing uh, the spiders or mining the hunger crystals, make your way south over that bridge and up towards the rune gate. This here is the sacrifice pit. Interact with it with the F key. And in here, basically, you're going to give up items to get XP. So, the something noteworthy though is that the XP that you get from these items doesn't carry over. So, you want to split the items up. You can do that by clicking shift, clicking the uh, mouse button on the items that you want to split. I'm going to level up and re-interact with it. Because if I gave all this up, it would have been wasted XP. You get some points here. On a common vessel, which is the vessel that you begin with as a new player, it's not overly important. You can just put most of your points into the point uh, into the skill that's gonna be the most appropriate for your class. But if you wanna get some more information, you can click on details here. You can hover your mouse over the, over the stats and it'll actually tell you what each stat does. There's these other tabs up here too, craft and explore. Take some time to have a look at these skills so you can work out how you want to play the game and what stats are going to be best for your playstyle. Once you've finished the sacrifice fire and you've gotten a few levels, press N to open up your talent tree. All characters have a talent tree and the max level is 30. Once you reach level 25, you're going to unlock a subclass. What I highly recommend is that you have a look at these skills the far right of the class that you've chosen to have an idea of what type of playstyle that they will have. This will help you identify where you should be spending your points at an early date. But I do recommend that you make sure you unlock the minor slots and the major explorations. Major disciplines, sorry. Most of your passes will come from disciplines, but in order to equip the discipline, first you need to obtain it. On a common vessel, you can get that from the temple, but we'll go over that shortly. Something else you need to have is a level requirement and unlock that slot in your talent page. I want to go over our energetic harvest pips. If you look down the bottom right of our screen, we have the five blue circles. If you press K and you have a look at the ultimate, and then you go to this one here, Energetic Harvest, explains to you what the pips do based on when you use them. So currently it says, you gain Furious Reaper, which increases harvest based damage by all by 40, last six seconds or two hits, whichever comes first. Now currently we use five pips in order to hit more damage. Like so, I took down a tree, basically two hits. Whenever you're mining woodcutting, you gain the pips back down the bottom right. Three, increases our stamina, because we use stamina at the top left in order to be able to mine and stuff. Stamina is only going to be an issue when you're consistently woodcutting or consistently mining. Once you've made your way all the way south of Beachhead, you're going to find yourself here at the temple. 
all the temples on all factions that are at exact same. So there's four ways you can go. North is where you're going to find the training dummies. Obviously, they're used for practicing your new abilities. East, those rune gates over there. Based on what your temple is connected to on the map, depends on which rune gate is open. If you press M, you'll see where you are on the map. Then if you press the campaign map, you'll see that me in balanced, balanced faction, I'm currently connected to Nysa, Axis Mundi, and Tiferian. Now let's go south. Over here, you're going to find a handful of vendors. Some of them are incredibly useful for new characters, especially if you have some gold. I'm going to point out this vendor in particular. If you interact with him, you'll see that he has a mount here for a thousand gold. He also has some weapons that are fairly, you know, quite a lot better than the ones that you will have from starting the game. This vendor here sells exploration disciplines, only in common uh, quality. Exploration disciplines, you can apply those to your character by placing them into this slot. But if you do that, make sure that you equip them in your passive tree, otherwise you won't get the effects. This NPC sells major disciplines, and this one sells minor disciplines. Three very important vendors, but only useful for a new player, currently. To the south here, this is a local bank. You can store stuff in this chest, but you won't be able to access them in the chest uh, throughout the world. And also, you want to make sure that you remove the items from your local bank before the campaign ends. There's a table for each passive tree in crafting. But for now, let's just focus on the crafting station general. This is all you will need for the first day or two. Make yourself familiar with that. And then come and have a look on the east. You'll find that there's a bunch of vendors here that you can buy some items to be able to craft some weapons and some leather, uh, craft and some armor, depending on what your class is. I would not recommend that you actually buy anything from these vendors, however, um, only because gold's going to be more valuable if you spend it on disciplines and other stuff. Once you're ready to move out of the temple, just make your way east, use one of the room gates to get out into the open world. Before we go any further out into the open world, what I recommend that you do is press B. B is your spirit bank. Spirit bank will allow you to store items across servers, per, across characters, essentially anything that you don't want to lose, you should be storing into your spirit bank. Now, currently in campaign, you're able to put stuff in your spirit bank everywhere you, you are, but I believe that will be changed in the future. So you are only put, able to put stuff in your spirit bank when you're at the temple. So that's why I check it now. I always check it as I leave the temple to make sure there's actually nothing on my on me in my inventory that I don't want to lose. The last thing that I want to talk about very quickly is the map. If you press M, open up your map. Wherever you are currently, it will open up that map. Now there's these points of interest, for example, Dim Grove. As you can see in the map, this looks like a forest. You know, like um, there's going to be a lot of trees and stuff over there. So if you're looking for woodcutting, then that's where you should be going on your map. These brown areas here with these um, these big walls and these like paths. And over here, for example, these are war tribes. Uh, they're points of interest that there's going to be war tribes there. You can kill the enemies there. In God's Reach, they're going to be between one, uh, rank 1 and rank 5. Um, war tribes are very, very good to farm. They drop... Uh, gold, they drop disciplines at higher levels, they drop items that um, you can sacrifice for XP. Uh, I want you to point out these bits here. So anything that looks like this, this is a uh, cavern. So it's going to 
potentially be a quarry. Uh, and normally there's um, two of these. See, here's another one over here. One will be for ore, and one will be for stone. Usually that's what you'll find. And inside of these places, there's a lot of spiders. Um, there's queen spiders, raid spiders. Don't take on a raid spider by yourself. Uh, you could potentially take on a queen spider, depending on its level, as long as you can you know, stun it a lot. Um, what else is there? Also want to point out that you can see other people's temples. So this is the rune gate to the Chaos Faction Temple. Now, if you're in balance and you come nearby this rune gate temple, okay, you actually get a debuff and up the top right will you know, say that you're in the enemy sanctuary. If you don't get out of that zone within like one minute, you instantly die. If you guys made it this far, you're absolutely amazing. I'm very rusty when it comes to making guides, but I will get a lot better, I promise. Now, this channel is going to be doing a lot of different MMOs, and Crowfall is going to be one of the main ones. I'm going to be doing PvP content, I'm going to be doing a lot of guides, really in-depth stuff. So if you guys are down for that, make sure you press subscribe. Until the next video, peace.